Hey, welcome to the show. It is 5.30. Drug testing 12-year-olds. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. There's a Texas school district that says, hey, if you want to play anything extracurricular, whether it's sports, yep. or, like you said, the chess, chess team. Chess team. Yeah, you got to watch out for the chess team. Yearbook <laughs> staff and those ne'er-do-wells going to be tested. Uh, I'm going to jump in and read a comment from a viewer. Teresa Gray jumps in. Can we say that on TV? No, you cannot say that on TV. She says, shoot. I edit. <laughs> I've been drug testing my son since he was 12. If you want mom and dad to cough up money for AAU, basketball summer camps, school basketball, blah, 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 you need to. As a lower income family, if you want us to invest in your future with extracurricular sports, you have to show us you want to invest in your future too. Right. Okay. Bo Bobby says, wouldn't be a bad idea. Sharon says, yes. Chewy says, unconstitutional. Start with police first. Okay. Whoa. Wow. Okay. So check this out. They are testing for alcohol, marijuana, heroin, and opioids. Like that's just a little bit of what they're looking for. How do you guys feel about that? Every day we want you to be a part of the conversation. What y'all think? Is this how we want to raise the kids? Maybe it is. I ain't got none. Keep I don't the conversation know. going. Use the hashtag Morning Blend Ten. Uh, you don't have any kids that you know. No, no, no. no. I, I got a niece that <laughs> I'm very involved with. That's right. <laughs> I just caught on to what he joke. said. I that's feel like we just going to move on. Yeah, Wait until they start doing <laughs> anyway. heroin and playing chess. Yeah. Okay, let's get to all your local and national headlines. We call it Daily Blend. We do it in five minutes. Rob, another hot one and a hot weekend to come. Will somebody get a test strip for Walt's coffee right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Hey, Gilmore Backyard looking pretty good. <laughs> and uh, I got to be honest with you, our mornings are going to matter more. Uh, than they have in a long time because this is the time right now when it's in the 70s. I know it's dark, but you can get out there and do whatever you want. You don't even have to think about the weather. And I think today is going to be a hot day, upper 90s. There's not that much wind at all, uh, but it's the same kind of day as yesterday. So calm at the moment, no delta breeze, warm in the morning, hot in the afternoon. We can handle that. Southern California, major monsoon issues, thunderstorms, and also flash flooding in burn areas. So a lot of activity related to humidity there, and we just barely have a little humidity. I think the big story is this. Going into the weekend, we're looking at not only hot temperatures, but really hot temperatures, challenging records, and very little relief overnight. So we're talking 90s and 80s in the middle of the night, and that means AC 24 hours a day. So just watch for it Saturday and Sunday. This heat wave is coming. It's going to be on a weekend, which really matters because that's when we're doing things. Okay, let's go ahead and switch it over to traffic. Now, in the Sacramento area, uh, we're fine. No major issues. Of course, there's a crash on the I-80 commute into the Bay Area, so watch for that. It's slow anyway, then you got a crash. What about Stockton? I-5 coming into to, uh, Stockton, there's also a crash. What about Tracy? Tracy's slow, and it just popped up, but it went away. There was a crash, so at least things slightly getting better for that commute. Walt. All right, uh, thank you very much, Rob. Uh, new this morning, at least six people are hurt after an apartment complex fire in Lockford. That's according to the Stockton record. Uh, we're going to take you live, uh, checking out the uh, situation there, obviously. Lock Haven Apartments, as we get a scan view, that looks like complete destruction there. Our photographer getting a closer look on this. So um, this is through Lockford. It is east of Lodi. The fire was reported just before 8.30 last night. Here's Snapchat video posted of the flames when things were angry here, probably about nine-ish. Uh, there's no word yet this morning on what started this particular fire. On to other news. Puerto Rico's governor says uh, his days are numbered. Late last night, Ricardo Rosseo said he will quit a week from tomorrow after weeks of protest. They were sparked by a leak of crude chat messages between him and top advisors. Rosseo is the first chief executive to resign in the modern history of Puerto Rico. Justice Secretary Wanda Vasquez will take over, becoming the U.S. Territory's second female governor. Kirsten? All right, 534 right now. Let's get to some other stories that are making headlines for you in your Daily Blend. Searching for answers. Sacramento deputies are looking for more information this morning on a body found inside of a burning car in Rancho Cordova. Firefighters found the body on El Mento Drive yesterday. If you know anything about this, call the SAC Sheriff's Office. Hurt in jail? Right now, police are looking into what happened to multimillionaire Jeffrey Epstein. He was found with marks around his neck in his cell. Epstein is in a federal jail on sex trafficking charges. He was denied bail last week. What's next? This morning, after former special counsel Robert Mueller's testimony, top Democrat Nancy Pelosi says she's still not budging on impeachment for now. I think that if we go down that path, we should go in the strongest possible way. Mueller spent over six hours in the hot seat answering questions on his report on the Russia investigation. The president called the investigation three years of embarrassment. 
All right, so that brings us to our poll of the day. We want to know, did Mueller's testimony change your mind about anything? Vote on the ABC 10 app or go to abc10.com slash vote to let us know. Right now, it looks like 62% of you are saying no. Your mind wasn't changed. Why am I not surprised by that? We'll keep an eye on that throughout the morning. Hey, Carlos. Hey, good morning, Kirsten. I'm in Elk Grove this morning. We've been telling you for months now about the overcrowding happening at local animal shelters, especially at Bradshaw Animal Shelter in Sacramento. Good news is help is in the works. You can see it here. Construction continues at the Elk Grove Animal Shelter, but that's also part of the bad news because that means construction continues and the grand opening has still been pushed back due to the rain in the winter. The 22,000 square foot facility will open to the public until sometime in September. But the good news is that it's already sheltering 20 stray cats and 20 dogs in Elk Grove, which means Bradshaw Animal Shelter in Sacramento that's dealing with extreme overcrowding is no longer responsible for any of the stray animals that come out of Elk Grove. And it also makes it easier for officer, officers here in Elk Grove because they, don't, they no longer have to drive back and forth to Bradshaw to drop off animals. It's much closer for them to uh, drop off any animals that they might have uh, picked up in the field and get right back out in the field. When it's finished, the shelter will house 65 dogs and 55 cats. It's about 1,500 animals per year. That's enough capacity to service all the animals they expect to see here in Elk Grove. By the way, there's an off-site uh, pet adoption event going on today at a Dreaming Dog Brewery in Elk Grove. That information on my Facebook page. Really quickly, before I send it back to Kirsten, uh, Walt Gray and I had a quick conversation early this morning. He asked, why are these local animal shelters so overcrowded? That's a really good question because it puts things into perspective. The big reason uh, experts say the really simple answer is overbreeding mm. that has caused an animal overpopulation of nearly 50 million dogs and cats. A third of them end up homeless and on the streets, of wow. course, causing more work for a local animal shelter. We'll send it back to you. That's good perspective. Thank you, Carlos, for adding that. I remember Bob Barker used to always say, got to control the pet population. Have your pet spayed or neutered. And that is your daily blend of news and information. If you got something you want to share with us, when you see it online, just use the hashtag MorningBlend10. And to get more stories like these straight to your inbox, sign up for our Daily Blend newsletter. Text the word email to 916-321-3310 or go to our website, abc10.com slash email and sign up real easy like.